Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an inexpensive Hobby King ESC, reflash it with Simon K firmware so that you can use it for a brushless drive system for a combat robot. So what's so special about brushless motors? Well, generally speaking, a brushless motor has a much higher power to weight ratio than a brushed motor. For instance, these two motors are roughly the same amount of power. And as you can see, the brushed version is significantly larger and significantly heavier for the same roughly amount of power. However, with a brushless motor, you need a specialized motor controller called an ESC. And the ESC is the electronic speed controller, which allows it to turn. Most inexpensive ESCs are throttle only, meaning they only go in one direction, just either forward or just reverse, depending on how you have it configured. So with loading a different firmware onto the ESC, we can actually make it do drive, which means going forward and reverse like a traditional brushed motor would do, and we get the extra added benefit of the power to weight ratio of the brushless motor. I'm going to be using a really simple and inexpensive programmer, the USB ASP. I'm going to load Simon K on there, enable the forward and reverse commands, and then make a nice little brushless drive system for my upcoming robot. The first step to doing this whole process is to not only pick your motor, but also pick your corresponding ESC. If you're not familiar with ESCs, they have a lot of different ratings. The biggest rating that you typically see is going to be the current rating. This right here is a 60 amp ESC, meaning it has a peak current of 60 amps. I think there is like a peak beyond that at like 80 or something, but you know, generally speaking, it's a 60 amp worth of current delivery. Also, the other thing you're going to need to look out for is the amount of voltage it can handle. That's typically the number of cells, you know, whether it be a two cell, four cell or six cell or a what nine volt, 16 volt and 24 volt, depending on if you're using LiPo or whatever. So you want to make sure that the voltage matches what your system is doing and the current is going to match your motor and then you should be good to go. But it's a little bit more complicated than that if you're looking for an ESC that you can flash with Simon K. Not every single ESC is gonna let you do that. So if you wanna pause this video right now and check out the links on the description, I do have a table that a lot of people have collaborated on that shows most of the common ESCs you can find at Hobby King or elsewhere that can be flashed with Simon K. The biggest thing that you need to look out for is any ESC that has an Atmega 8 processor in it can accept Simon K. Now there are a couple little things that get tricky. For instance, do they have pads or you know the programming ports accessible, things like that. But generally, if you look down at that table, you should be able to find out what you're doing. I am using the, um, I guess, F-Series is what they call them from Hobby King. This is the F-80A, there's also, or 60A, there's also a 70, an 80, a 30, a 20, and a 10. So there's a nice range of ESCs for this um, model, the um, F-Series. And so I'm going to be demonstrating this whole process with one of these. The very first thing you need to do after picking out your ESC is to cut away the outer heat shrink wrapping to verify that you have the right processor and verify that you have the pads that you can use to program everything. Unfortunately, a lot of these ESCs go through multiple hardware revisions, so it's never really guaranteed that they're gonna stay the exact same, so you kinda of have to do a lot of checking. So if you bought one like a year ago, it's not really guaranteed that you're gonna buy it now and it's gonna have the exact same hardware configuration. Once you cut everything open and verify that you have the right processor and that everything looks right, you need to find the programming pins. There's six pins that you're interested in. There's VCC, Ground, Reset, SCK, MOSI, and MISO. Those are the um, ISP header pins that allow you to program it with the programmer. Now these pins are laid out completely different for every ESC. Sometimes there are no pins for it. Sometimes there are just pads for it. Sometimes there's a header, sometimes there's not. It's gonna be different for every ESC that you get. In that list I talked about earlier that shows all the compatible ESCs, there's generally a picture that shows what those pads look like. Also, I have a link down in the description that shows the actual processor itself, and you can tie directly into the pins on the processor if you want. 
These are just pins that come off of that chip, so you could solder directly to the chip. There is also a little um, Hobby King tool that's kind of like a little stamp almost that presses down on top of the IC that makes contact with those appropriate pins. I haven't used one of these, but I've heard some people having successful luck with that, so you could use that as well. But generally speaking, we need to get access to those six pins so that we can plug them into the programmer. Thankfully for the F series, they're all laid out in a nice little row. So it was just a matter of finding where those were, finding out which ones they were, and then soldering little wires to them so I could plug that into the programmer. Once I got everything soldered, it was just a matter of figuring out which pin was which and plugging it into the corresponding pins on my programmer. The programmer I got has a 10 pin ribbon cable that comes out of it and it goes down into this little um, adapter which gives me six pins out, which are the six pins that I need. So I just connected them directly into there. Now that everything is physically connected up, it's time to do the software side of things. Depending on which programmer you have, you will need to get the drivers for it. I am using the USB ASP programmer, so if you check the description down below, I have the drivers listed for this. You can use any programmer you want that is designed for programming an AVR or Atmel processor over the ISP header. So feel free to use your own programmer if you want. These are just really cheap and easy to get. In addition to the drivers for this, you will also need to download KK Multicopter. And if you do download that, just keep in mind you're going to need the most latest version of the Java runtime environment. So you might need to download that as well. Both of these are free. And I do have links to both of them down below in the description. Okay, now that everything is loaded, we need to open up the Flash program. So this is what it looks like. The very first thing you want to do is select your programmer. I'm using the USB ASP as I mentioned earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And for the controller, we need to make sure that we are selecting an Atmega based brushless ESC. So I'm going to select the Atmega 8 based brushless ESC and enable the bootloader, which is this one right there. So once I select that, now it's time to select the proper firmware. If we go back to our list over here, um, you have to find which firmware file you need to load. So if we look at this F60A, we can see that the bs.hex is the hex file that I need. All of these other ones have different hex files, but the bs.hex is what I need to be using. So if you go back into here, we're going to click on the Simon K firmware compiler, and you select the master. And then we're going to go ahead and download. This downloads all the brand new um, firmware files from the GitHub repository. So now I've just downloaded all the new files. So I'm just going to drop down and select BS. Now this is the BS hex. And if I loaded this on there right now, it would be a nice fancy ESC with Simon K firmware. However, we have not yet enabled the reverse. To do this, we just need to make sure that we're on this master tab and then scroll down until you see these lines, RC pulse reverse. This is currently set to zero. We need to set this to one. This will enable the um, forward and reverse commands. And then this RC calibration, we need to disable that and set this to zero. If you've ever used an ESC with a radio, you typically know that you have to have the throttle set to zero when you turn on the radio. If you have it set to something else, it will go into a calibration mode. Since we're going to have the stick at zero when we turn it on, or the middle, let's say, we need to turn off this calibration. So once you change those two values, we're just going to click Save and Compile. And then that is done. And then we're just going to go ahead and click this button, which will flash it to the ESC. And there we go. And it just takes a few seconds to write the information and then verify it. And there we go. Everything is done. Let's go ahead and test it out. Now all that's left to do is put some connectors on it, hook it up to a motor, hook it up to a battery, and test it out.
Hopefully this video gives you a better idea of what's involved in reflashing a Hoppy King ESC with the Simon K firmware. Really it's not that bad, you just need a compatible ESC programmer, couple pieces of software, and possibly your trusty soldering iron, and that's really about it. After filming the previous segments, I actually did go back and redo some of the soldering on my ESC. I actually took off the individual wires and added a ribbon cable. So this ribbon cable plugs directly into the programmer like that. So I can kind of change settings more on the fly. And the reason I did this is because I do plan on kind of playing and tweaking with the firmware just a little bit. Maybe I can get something more out of it. If you're not going to be reloading software on and off, then really this is kind of useless. But if you do plan on making Making a lot of tweaks, putting the ribbon cable directly on there is just a big time saver. So overall, I'm very happy with how the brushless drive has been performing. There's going to be more tests on that in the future, but this process is now done, and so I can start working on the robot itself. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Ha, 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 ha.